So what we ended on last time was I rewrote like this kind of texture system so that instead of being like all of this kind of duplicated code, we just have a function now that takes in like some kind of like statically defined list of file paths here so that we can just load the textures kind of all at once, which just kind of cleans it up a little bit. And the reason why I explained that I did that, one of the reasons is when you kind of look at the code, you know, think about what's important. Because even though it's very important for you to program in a way that obviously suits the computer, like the computer or the device is going to be executing your code, like that is probably the most important piece of this puzzle. At the end of the day, the code that you're writing is not necessarily about you as a person, like, oh, what does my code look like? Even though you can get quite creative and artistic with it, at the end of the day, your goal is kind of usually to make the computer do a specific job. So like outside of like making your code look like ASCII art or something like that, we're programming CPUs here. But then a very close second to all of this is how am I going to live on with my code? So you, as a human, you're going to have to keep reading the code. It's cool that the computer can read it and execute it, hopefully in an efficient kind of, you know, well-structured way. But then also it's important to consider the human side of the equation as well, which is how am I going to be able to keep working with my code? You know, a really good comparison, I guess, is in a construction site, you might have scaffolding. The scaffolding isn't there to hold up the structure that you're actually building. Like the building can stay up fine, that's okay. But you still have to work with the building. And if it's kind of at a great height, you need a way to be able to reach that height and comfortably work. It's very similar in programming. There's lots that we can do as developers to kind of build that scaffolding around our code base. That's why a lot of large software projects have a lot of kind of auxiliary tools that are used to test the code and make sure everything works. But specifically what I'm talking about here is when we kind of flip through this code and we read all of it, what is important to us as the human? Because the computer can have no problem executing this code, that's okay. What we kind of rewrote it into is not really fundamentally different on an execution level. But you can see that this looks very different to this. And specifically what we've done is kind of taken this enemy 1, enemy 2, enemy 3, enemy 0 and made it like the focal point. Almost feels like I'm talking about composition for a photography class or something. But in a way, we're composing this function to look like this rather than this, because really the only piece of information we care about are what are my file paths that I have to manually input because this person who has written this code has decided to make a system where you have to manually input every single frame as a file path, which we're not gonna talk about that in itself. That's just the way it's written. We're not gonna change that. I do have to stop somewhere, but we're kind of using it as an example. And so those kind of two things, the computer that's executing the CPU that's executing your code, number one, and then number two, what is it like from the human side of things? That's really what constitutes software development. And in the end, that's something you want to keep in mind at all times.